Marshmallow Fanboy back with another review, this time of Marvel Legends series Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. But it was spurned by the uh, Spider-Man No Way Home where Doc Ock appears. And he's wearing, as far as I know, this is the same. He appears as he did in Spider-Man 2 in that movie. So, because he, he only made one appearance, so it makes sense that that was the appearance. But for whatever reason, it's not Spider-Man No Way Home, it's Spider-Man 2. Much like um, Andrew Garfield's was Amazing Spider-Man 2 and not uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. So maybe it was easier to clear this version? I'm not sure. It's a deluxe figure. It's got the tentacles. And the tentacles, as far as I know have wires in them so you can pose them. They also have sort of uh, these support kind of arms where I guess he can he can plant them and, and he can travel on them or stand on them. And then he's got two extra hands. Let's see if that's the same. No, this is an action figure thing on the side and then it's still the action figure but a different different look for him. So this is what he looks like. In here, I was I was really excited because, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home had all of the sort of Spider-Mans, but also had all the Spider-Man villains. And I thought that was really cool. They haven't done anything with Electro, as far as I know. There hasn't been any kind of announcement or anything. But there's been a Green Goblin, a Doc Ock, a, and a Sandman. And no no Electro seems, seems like, ah, rats. But the, the Electro that they had in, in No Way Home was a little bit different from the one in Spider-Man. Sorry, Amazing Spider-Man 2. So maybe maybe it runs into, I don't know, licensing difficulties? Or or maybe Jamie Foxx didn't like the likeness? Or I don't know. I don't know what the deal is there. But we didn't get an Electro. I'm just realizing that now. We, we didn't get an Electro. And I'm... I'm realizing that right now. I'm like, that sucks. That we didn't get that. But maybe it's coming. Maybe it's going to be a convention exclusive or something. I have no idea. So why don't we open this bad boy up and see what we think of him in person. Okay, now that he's out of the package, let's take a closer look at Doc Ock out of the package. First, let's, he came with um, additional... Parts two of these flat pieces, which I don't think he's meant to stand on, because the things he's standing on are much larger. Must just be, maybe, oh, you can bend them. So these are extra, extra ones where you can kind of bend them into shapes. Very cool. So it comes with two of these that you can do that with, and they are articulated really nicely. The, the... Um, design is really nice. The textures and everything else. The hands. He has two fists on him now. But he has two open grip hands. Two wide, really, really wide open grip hands. Is he supposed to be gripping his own tentacles or something like that? I don't know what he's meant to hold that the that the grip is so wide. The arms are articulated. They're they're wired. They're, they're a, bit, a little bit stiff. Hard to move. They... Uh, everything that is on him sort of is easy to take on and off. It's just a, it's just a post and you put it through the hole and then boom, it's on. The same with these large ones at the bottom. He stands up for maybe a real short time and then he either pitches forward or backwards. I haven't really solved that problem. I don't know how to sort of support him or if I can get him into better positions. But I think a lot of it is just going to be trying to balance him. So the arms are articulated. They move around. They're really nice. They have a little holes in them. So they just like kind of those bendy figures and things. And I don't know if the holes are to sort of proof it against disintegrating or I'm not sure. But the tentacles connect directly into his back. So they're not Things that you can take in and out. They're not sort of articulated in a way that you can sort of maneuver them or anything. For all intents and purposes, he's just, he's hardwired in. And so is the 
the, the over the trench coat and the overcoat over that. And of course he has the what the tentacles are supposed to be connected to, which connects kind of all up his spine and everything. The likeness is really good. Of course the legs I don't I don't know, the legs are virtually worthless probably because of the because of the tentacles maybe. But the tentacles are so flexible that you could pose him, maybe the, the tentacles are crawling and he's sort of kind of flying toward you. See if his head will support that. Yeah, he gets up pretty good as far as that goes. The glasses are molded to him, so they're permanently there. This is a nice figure. As soon as I figure out how to to deal with him a little bit better, think I think it'll be a little bit easier to move him around. I put I put the um, part of his leg farthest back that's where he's pitching forward, so maybe he won't pitch backwards. We'll see if that works out for me. But it's a really cool figure. It's one of those figures that justifies the deluxe price tag. I mean, just, you know, Green Goblin will too because he comes with a glider. And that's really cool. But I am reminded that... Oh, no! White Rabbit came with the the glider for the Demo Goblin, I think. And that was a really cool... But I, I guess Green Goblin's glider is a lot more involved than that. So I'm not sure. But... I like this figure. I just I just need to figure out how to to get him uh posed in a way that'll that'll make him sort of support his own weight and not be well, I'm not going to do it on on camera, but it's a really good figure. He's a nice addition to the collection. I'm going to enjoy sort of trying to make him uh make him stand up, make him do cool stuff. But you should absolutely get him. I got him on sale, and hopefully there will be other sales in the future, and you can nab your own Doc Ock. So until then, enjoy your toys.